Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel Food Tech Insight. This video is a continuation of our carbohydrate series. In this video, we are going to understand the very important topic in carbohydrate that is gelatinization and retrogradation. In our previous video that is the part 1 and part 2 I have explained about a basic of carbohydrate and a part of functional properties of carbohydrate. I request you to kindly go through it for a better understanding of this video. So let's begin with the gelatinization of starch. So previously also I have explained regarding the starch molecules. But in this video I will just go in depth of this about the structure also. So the starch is a major component of many food plants such as wheat, barley, rice, corn, potato, sweet potato, cassava etc. So it's a major source of carbohydrate and energy in the human diet. Starch consists of amylose and branch amylopectin. In previous video I have explained the structure and the bond between this. And this molecule is present in a ratio of around 15 to 25 percent is the amylose and the 85 to 75 percent is the amylopectin. So the amylose here you can see it's a linear uh, linkage of the alpha glucose unit and the bonding will be 1,4 glycosidic bond. Whereas in amylopectin a linear will be there with the branch one where it will be 1,6 glycosidic bond. So before studying the gelatinization, we have to study the starch structure. So the starch granule structure is organized in a ringed structure. You can see this picture. And uh, this area is the amorphous area or less crystalline area. So this granules, it's a regular orientation of amorphous and crystalline region that give the granules its characteristics by a fringe pattern. So this is the pattern. It's like a amorphous, it's a crystalline, then amorphous region, crystalline, amorphous region. This pattern, it is um, uh, oriented in a, this pattern. So the known crystalline or the amorphous region, this contain the amylose molecules and portion of amylopectin molecules. So absorb water when we provide water for a gelatinization process. So the water will be absorbed in amorphous area and then it will start rather freely uh, moving freely within the granules. So this is a pictorial point of a process of gelatinization. I will explain it further but a small a little bit of explanation in this picture. This is a cross section of a starch granule. We can see the pattern here. They have highlighted it. And this pattern is like amorphous crystalline, amorphous crystalline. So the absorption of water will be at this amorphous region. Okay. And then when we sub, uh, pour, add water to it, then uh, the swelling or further I will explain that the swelling of these granules will occur. And this structure of the starch is composed of amylopectin and amylose. Where amylose, you can see this is the linear one. But if you are keeping it as a branch, then this process, this point will be a amylopectin. So let's start with uh, now the topic gelatinization. So gelatinization is the breakdown of intermolecular bonds between starch molecules. That is the breakdown of amylose and amylopectin uh, bonding. Allowing the hydrogen bond sites to engage more water molecules. The intermolecular association might take place between O6 of the amylose and OH2 of the amylopectin molecules due to the hydrogen bonding. You can see in this picture the bondings here. So when there is water and heat, the intermolecular bond between starch molecules tends to break. That's the like this O6, OH2 bond will start uh, breaking and this when the hydrogen bonding site will have the ability to hold more water molecules in this site. So the starch granules become dissolved in water and it will be irreversibly uh, processed and it will act as a plasticizer. So the process of gelatinization occurs in three steps. Starch granule swelling, it's melting and amylose leaching. So when we heat the starch sample, the swelling occurs due to the absorption of water into the amorphous space of starch, which I have explained previously. 
देर आफ्टर द वॉटर एंटर्स टाइटली बाउंड एरियाज ऑफ स्ट्रार्ज ग्रेन दैट इज आफ्टर इट विल एब्जॉर्व इन द एमर फर्स्ट डेज इट विल ट्राई टू गो टूवर्ड्स द मीन क्रिस्टलाइन क्रिस्टलाइन एरिया विच कंटेन हेलिकल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ एमाइलोफेक्टिन Normally water cannot enter this region but when you heat it allows that then the penetration of water increases the randomness of starch granules which leads to the dis- disintegration of the starch there are some factors which are involved in uh, gelatinization the first is the type of the plant from which the starch is obtained the amount of water present in the medium even the ph plays a role in gelatinization process and of course the concentration of salt in the medium sugar protein fat contents so when any other ingredient contained within a starch can affect the gelatinization process like it may slow down the rate at which water is absorbed so let's take an example of a sauce like a pasta sauce where we use a flour for as a base so if a sauce contains sugar this sugar will try to absorb the liquid and are competing with that starch so this can disrupt and slow down the process meaning it will take longer time for the starch to thicken the sauce and if we are adding extreme or that is the too much sugar it can completely prevent the gelatinization process this is a small pictorial explanation this is a normal water and a starch granules are present so it first it won't get dissolved because the water temperature is a normal ambient temperature when we start heating it will lead to swelling of this starch granules and further if a temperature will uh, increase to for more than 60 degree celsius the disintegration of the starch granules will occur and the amylose and the amylopectin which have been broken the amylose will come out will try to leach out here and then further it will get dissolved and will make the liquid thicken or the viscous a small representation of the starch gelatination this is the starch granule intact with the amylose and amylopectin so when we will provide water after heating this disintegration will happen the amylose will come leach out and the water molecules these are the water molecules it will come inside the next is the retrogradation of the starch so retrogradation i will say it's a opposite of gelatinization process in a mechanism i'm telling so retrogradation will occur after gelatinization process so retrogradation is a chemical reaction that takes place when amylose and amylopectin chains in cooked gelatinized starch realign themselves when cooling the starch sample so in simple i'll explain this is the gelatinization process where the amylose have been uh, leached out from the starch granules so when we'll cool it and store it this amylose will come will try to enter inside and will try to realign with the other amylose been inside present and try to realign in a parallel form and the water molecules will start to leach out so this is the retrogradation of the starch so if we heat the starch and dissolve it in water it caused the destruction of the crystalline structure of the amylose and the amylopolymer amylopectin molecules will lead to hydration and forms a viscous solution so if we cool this viscous solution or leave it at a low temperature the linear molecules and the linear part of amylopectin molecules tend to retrograde and rearrange themselves again forming a more crystalline structure so the linear part of the molecules tend to place themselves in a parallel manner i have explained before that it will start uh, arranging themselves in a parallel manner and forming a hydrogen bridges between them in this process we can observe that amylose crystallization is faster than amylopectin crystallization furthermore retrogradation causes the expel of water which can also be known as synergesis so however when we can observe a small and amount of water on the top of the gel this retrogradation pro- process is directly related to staling or aging of bread so moreover retrograded starch is less digestible however the chemical modification of starch can lead to reduction or enhancement of the retrogradation process 
and these additives like fat glucose sodium nitrate etc can reduce the retrogradation process of starch this you can see starch retrogradation in bread and rice grain this is a very common this is the starch molecules when we'll heat and provide water it will gelatinize amorphous structure will start absorbing water and once it is cooled or stored for a long time the retrogradation will occur recrystallization will try to occur but uh, it will lead to a stale bread and similar in the raw rice you can see here gelatinization and then cooked rice plus cooled then it will try to realign themselves and then it will uh, the retrogradation of the starch will occur so let's see the basic uh, like uh, difference between gelatinization and retrogradation so in definition gelatinization is the process of breaking down intermolecular bonds between starch molecules allowing the hydrogen bonding site to engage more water molecules whereas retrogradation is the chemical reaction that takes place when amylose and amylopectin chain in cooked gelatin starch realign themselves when cooling the starch sample so here we have to provide heat and the temperature here we have to cool when it means we have to reduce the temperature here will be the leaching out here will be the uh, realigning of the am uh, amylose and amylopectin structure the main concern here is water is taken into the hydrogen bonding site and here water is expelled from the polymer network it forms a less crystalline structure it forms a more crystalline structure because here the breakdown of the starch uh, uh, like the starch disintegration occurs so the crystallinity will be less but in retrogradation it will be more it will be an amylose and amylo uh, uh, sorry amorphous and the amylose and amy amylopectin molecules align to form a crystalline structure having hydrogen bond bridges and the key difference between gelatinization and retrogradation is that gelatinization refers to the act of making or becoming a gelatinized whereas retrogradation refer to motion in a retrograde manner with this i end this video uh, thank you if you have any query uh, do comment us on foodtech inside@gmail.com